Do you have a desire to exercise but you're scared of moving because you have pain or because you haven't done it for a while or maybe your body's getting older and you're not sure exactly what you should do? Um, my name is Sarah Hewlett, I'm a physio by trade and I have been for 30 years and I help people just like you day in day out get their bodies back into moving again and back into moving safely. And what I've just found quite concerning is I'm on a few different um, pages on Facebook for pain or forums about people who have discomfort and there's a lot of when you're on those pages there's a lot of negativity about nothing helps I've tried it everything helps um, I've tried everything and nothing helps rather um, but one post that was on there this morning was about SOJ pain um, and SOJ is sacroiliac joint pain um, and the sacroiliac is quite a big joint so it's the two two joints at the bottom of your um, spine where your pelvis so the two halves of your pelvis join together on the sacrum and they're, and they're quite big joints um, and they're actually quite complex so if you have SIJ issues what happens is you might find that if you stand on one leg it hurts if you cross your leg it hurts sort of on one side in the lower back if you sort of trip on one leg you might get a shooting pain up that side of the spine um, and that's sort of quite typical, you know, it hurts if you cross over or turn over in bed um, and people will say I've got an SIJ issue. Now, this is quite common if you've had a baby, if you've had pregnancy, if you've, maybe if you've gained a lot of weight and your back gets a little bit sore. But the key thing is with um, SIJ issues is that initially we start moving you, you need to make sure that you know what's going on. So if you imagine your pelvis is a bowl, it might be that one part of your oblique is weak, which makes that side of the pelvis flare out a little bit. It might be that you're rotated to that side. It might be that you hike on that side so the pelvis is actually tipped. So there's a lot of complex things going on and it might be that you're sort of squeezing at the back so if your core is supposed to be working at the front and it's not you might find the actual pressures that the spine is and the back is a little bit greater so creating um, strength around the core eases pressure on the spine you might also find that if you are a little bit weaker at the back what you actually need to do is maybe strengthen the back muscles and there's lots of other complex things that um, that sort of go on um, as well so i find it really upsetting and really um distressing that you know people go oh i've tried everything it didn't work i tried this it didn't work people said do core exercises it didn't work people said do this it didn't work people said walk it didn't work and really what might actually be going on is that you're not addressing what the problem is so if you've got a pelvis that could be a little bit open at the front a little bit open at the back a little bit this way a little bit sort of rotated a little bit twisted a little bit of a combination of everything else which is common we can see that as well and then on top of that you've got issues where you know you're sore so your brain goes don't do that so it hurts so you spasm or you're trying to effectively work and change how you move but you don't know what the hell you're doing, then it's going to get worse or then it's going to get irritated and you're going to compound that problem again and again and again. It doesn't mean that you're not able to improve. It just means that you haven't found the right way to do it for you. Um, and so my, my aim and my purpose is really to help people, especially those who feel they're at the end of their rope. They've had enough, they don't know what to do, they've tried what they think is absolutely everything. But unless you've gone to somebody who has actually told you what your problem is and explained to you what can make it worse and what can make it better so you can do more of the better things and less of the worse things, what I generally see is people who have a problem. So you have a pain, you have an issue, you have whatever you have and what you do day to day is compounding it every single time because you're not ever breaking the habit you're not ever breaking the cycle you're doing a little bit and then you're going back to your normal pattern or your normal what have you I mean we see it all the time you know people go to the gym and they do stuff and they feel great and it's good and then they go straight back out and they collapse or they go straight back out and sit for 20 hours or whatever it might be and what you're not doing is then translating what you've done to help yourself into day in day out life so if you have a problem here where with your pelvis, your core is weak, so you go and you do some core strength exercises and that helps, great, but you need to carry that on because if you then spend the rest of the day 
hanging backwards and stretching all those abs exercise, it does come back, it doesn't change, it doesn't give you that long-term result. So number one, get yourself out of these negative loop problems. Get yourself out of these negative loop patterns. Get yourself out of these negative loop ideas. And please get yourself out of these negative groups that compound that there is no hope. Because all it does is it reinforces in you and your belief and your subconscious that there is no help. This is you. This is you set for life. And, you know, we're not sort of doing the old, let's work till we're 65, we get our clock or we watch and we, you know, that's it for 10 years. We're also now living life from 60, 65 onwards and we've still got 20, 30 years potentially where we are now active. We don't retire and go and sit in a chair and watch TV. We don't do that anymore. We actually retire and we're active. We're looking after grandkids. We're becoming grey nomads. We're travelling if the world allows us to. And you should not have to put up with pain and discomfort for years and years and years and be looking down the barrel of another decade or two or three or four and wondering how the hell are you going to manage. So please, I've been a physio for 30 years and there's probably a handful of people that I can say I haven't been able to help. And in 30 years, that's huge. <laughs> Like that's a lot of, that's a lot of people I have been able to help. The ones that I haven't been able to help, you know, maybe what they had needed something more than me. It needed medical surgical intervention because their condition or whatever was going on was too far the other way and conservative treatment was never going to help. But the majority of people that I have not been able to help is because they help. The ability for them to help themselves was also diminished because they weren't prepared to put in the time and the effort and the change required. And it doesn't have to be huge. You don't need to be spending half an hour every day doing things. The way that I manage people is making it doable. It's okay. This week, can you focus on just thinking about what you're doing every day for your body? This week, can you focus on, you know, how you're sitting? If you're aware that this happens when you sit, can you try and address it? This is how I want you to sit, how I want you to think about standing so we take pressure off this area. Can you do it every time you're on your phone? Maybe get up and try and be aware of it. So every time you're on your mobile, every time you stop at a traffic light, you're then imprinting that into your brain because you need to learn another way of moving and your body needs to do something proactive and different to have any long-term change and what doesn't happen in the most that I see because I get a lot of people come to me who have not had benefit and results elsewhere and the thing that hasn't given them results is because they don't know what they're doing every day that compounds what their problem is they don't realize that how they sit how they stand how they walk how they do things all their normal gestures and postures and quirks that make them them actually compound their issue and we have to address that and bring your awareness to it step by step by step by step and once you've got that awareness everything changes and you know you could find that your pain is different within just a few days you could find that your pain is different overnight because you then understand why it's happening and then you're able to address it so if you're squashing things take pressure off them if you're not holding things make them active that way you can change what's going on in your body and you get control back and the world is your oyster and then you're looking at decades of being able to move with a body that you feel confident with so getting off my soapbox if you're in a group or you're in something and you feel that is compounding negativity and it's compounding your belief that there is no hope get out of that group try something different even just message me and ask is there a is there, you know you don't even have to come and see me but please get a different viewpoint because i strongly feel and I truly believe that there is a way for you to move that is better, there is a way for you to move that is easier, and there is a way for you to do it that is simple and easy to implement and doesn't have to cause issues. Take care, think positive, follow me for tips, and, and message me if you'd like to chat.